Michael, congratulations into the semi-final, knocking out the defending champion and world number one. What are the emotions like right now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, obviously, I'm chuffed, and um, it started out one. It's just when you had double twelve, everything just left me. I just <laughs> Nothing left, and I feel like Ian Beale off East Enders. Nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just over the moon that I won that game. Mentally, is that a huge hurdle that you've beaten Johnny Clay and arguably the best player this year, the defending champion, and the world number one? Is that send out a real statement, and does that get you over the line? Um, not really, no, because if I can go out tomorrow and lose my game, it's, it means nothing, does it? It's, I'm just got to keep myself focused and keep myself prepared, right? And, sleeping right and yeah just tonight's about thinking about that game when I wake up in well probably said the afternoon it will be morning but <laughs> yeah then I start thinking about playing tomorrow and who knows I could turn up tomorrow and play the worst starts I've played but confidently in my head I know that I'm playing some of the best stuff I've played and yeah I'm really looking forward to it. Just touching on what you said there mentally how much did this take out of you how much does it drain you? With a quick turnaround. Yeah, every every set he threw in it was taking it out of me because it, I was two up in one, two one up in the other and I kept throwing him away. I just I was so inconsistent on his throw but on my throw I was like I'm not gonna miss. He's gotta if he wants to win it, he's gotta fight for it. And then I think he missed did he miss the dart to win it at five three and then yeah, he had double eights and I was like, No, I'm gonna push it now. And lucky enough that one two six went in, put me two in luck but as you see in the third leg, everything just went. <laughs> I just couldn't throw straight, I couldn't think straight, and then that's why the one three I went to my table, looked at the pictures of the kids, and I was like, this is for them, you've got to find something now. And look, uh, neither did, nearly took the one three eight, but then he missed again, and I was like, you cannot miss now. You miss, you're out. And luckily enough, it went in. Do you feel that when the crowd got on at him, he missed those match starts, he asked, obviously asked George, what, to, to do whatever George did. Do you think his head went at that point? Did you sense his game dropped? Um, I, uh, I don't know, because that person who was shouting, she was shouting for me, and it was annoying me just as much as him. And as Gezi turned around to look, I tried to say, well, she's doing my head as well, but he never looked at me. Once I said it to George, but yeah, he was, the crowd was always going to be against Gezi. Every match he plays for the last three years, they've been against him. But yeah, if I was luckily enough, I was there to mop up when he missed, and he was always there when I missed. And I think it worked itself out in the end. I think, I think in legs I was like 21 or 22, 15 up. So I was always in control of the match, but he had darts to win it at the end of it. You've been here before. How much of a better player are you now than a few years ago? I think I was playing better in 2019, especially looking at the stats and stuff, but I never, I don't think like I had the mental side I've got now, it could all change the next game, it could get even better, but I just think the mental side of my game is is what's helping me at the minute, I'm not giving up and I'm not throwing darts away, I'm just focusing 100% on the next three darts. Michael, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, you've beaten the reigning Premier League champion and now the reigning world champion, you must be supremely confident going into the next game. Um, I'm confident in whatever game I'm playing. If it, if after the first game against Ron or the second against uh, O'Connor, I've got to be confident. If you're not confident, you get beat. And yeah, I've luckily enough, I've probably beat the, the two informed players. But that'll mean nothing if I go out tomorrow and play the worst darts of three in this tournament. So I've just got to keep myself focused and get myself ready for the next game. But for now, it's just relaxing and thinking about what I've just done tonight and. That that's all I'm thinking about at the minute. Does tonight show how far mentally you've come in the last couple of years? Yeah, I think against Johnny and tonight, I could have, I could have threw them games away easily and give them more chances than they give me. But yeah, I think it's shown it tonight. Well, I've what I've been working on for the last twelve months. Cheers, Michael. Congratulations. Semi-final. Well done. We speak about mentality and uh, maturity uh, compared to say three years ago when you got to the final here. Describe how you've changed your mindset. How has it happened? Um, th three years ago, uh, I come into that final thinking, yeah, I've, I've won it. I know I'm playing Van Gaer and he's, he's on ridiculous form at that time. But when you looked at the stats before that final, I was winning everything like the 180s, the 140s, the tons, the doubling, the 
the tournament average. And I think he beat me seven three in the seven sets. I think five or six of them I had darts to win, and I lost them three two. But if I was think if he had the the belief in what I think now, I might have not miss them. But like I said in the previous questions that's the past, the only thing I can change now is the future. And I've got one more game, hopefully win, then I can rectify 2019. And You're not looking beyond obviously tomorrow's game. Get that of course not, I've got a serial winner in the BDC. He's won 10 or 11 majors, he's won countless of throw tournaments. I know he's not played his best darts, but he's still winning, he's still there, yeah, he's still in the last four. I'm hoping I bring me A game, and that's all I'm thinking of, is just keeping focused and getting ready for that next one. But you're not really popular in Wales right now. <laughs> um, I'm not forced to be popular in England, I'm popular back home with my wife and kids. That's all that matters, that all that matters to me now. Well, last year, it was probably the year the ferret, this could be the year the bull. Uh, yeah, I've started 2022 with a decent start. Well, yeah, it's it's just about keeping focus and keeping on it now. It, if went down, got beat, just the last, what, two weeks meant nothing. I know I've had a good run after the last two years, I've had made the semis, but no one wants to lose in the semis, they want to get to that final and they want to obviously be world champion and I'm one game away, like I said before, rectifying it and I'm two games away from living a childhood dream and changing my kids' lives. Just I wish you the very really best, thank you. Thank you very much mate, cheers. Michael, how important is it strategically for you and mentally to have a picture of the kids on that table because that could have been the big turning point? I have it in my darts case, I have the both passport forwards stuck in. My wallet in my pocket, I have that as well. Sometimes I might take it out. I've got their pictures on that as well. And it's just days, because like a couple of years ago, well, even a year ago, I'd give up. And we just bought a new house, and <laughs> the money I shell out every month on mortgages, I can't afford to give that away. I can't afford to um, lose matches. If I miss a couple of months on the mortgage, we're back on the streets. I know I've got two houses, but I sold the first one, bought. Uh, man, and then I bought another one as well. My mum and dad live in that. So if I miss the mortgages, they're homeless and I'm homeless. So I can't afford to do it. And I know that's a lot of added pressure, but it's helping at the minute. It's helping me keep focused and help me keep doing what I'm doing. What will you do tomorrow to keep yourself apart from getting up very late? But what will you do to keep your feet on the ground? Uh, I'm just staying in bed. <laughs> For the last week, eight days, I've not, not left my room. Uh, I think the 19th, I stopped smoking, or 18th. So I don't have to leave my room now. And every half an hour, 35 minutes, I was downstairs smoking and mixing with everyone. But now I get to chill, I get to, to talk to myself. There's nothing in my brain to talk about. It's just numb. But uh, yeah, I just get to lock myself away and just, <clears throat> I can watch YouTube, watch some games of myself when I play bad or when I play good. And, just think about stuff like that and what I can do to put it right or what I can do to keep going. Finally for me, is it officially going to be known as the Derby? Uh, I don't know what James is on about here now because he's, he's coming from nowhere that. But my would have been trimmed, my hair is a mess. It's just at the minute you can't, I can't go anywhere. I can't go back home to St Helens and get my mate to cut me hair because I could be one of the people that had to pull out the tournament. And if, I've just got to be safe and keep myself focused. And I think James is doing the same thing. And yeah, it's, I don't know, <laughs> it's me, James, and then obviously Whitlock holds the title of the, the best beer, doesn't he? But at the minute now, it's just me against James. Thank you very much. Thank you.